Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this afternoon's live uh, in our Facebook live series. The man that's sitting across from me um, is, is I suppose, the man that had the most influence me when he came to the principals at, at, at very early days in this one. This wonderful man across from me, Jamie Smart, and myself, got to each other. I was thinking about it this morning, Jamie, uh, more than seven years ago now, I think. Um, and of course, I would have been aware of you during your salad days, your NLP, etc. But my first introduction was to the principles was a very early principles audio. If the secrets so great, where's my Ferrari? Is that the one? Yeah. Um, and that was actually my very first introduction to the principles was through that audio. Um, all those years ago, and the impact of that has been extraordinary. As you well know, we've been part of each other's lives on and off over the last number of years. Um, And lots of people have heard me talk about this and lots of people have heard me talking about the impact of the principles and where it all came from. But the foundation of what I have uh, that I have today and the knowledge that I have today and how I work with a lot of people is based on our time together and the learnings that we had to, that, that, uh, while I was working with you in London. And that has become the formation of a lot of my work now. So. That would be my introduction of how I know you, and I'm sure as we'll flesh it out as the conversation goes on. But Jamie, would you do me the honor of introducing yourself today? Well, it's funny, you know, Billy, you, just in that brief introduction, you put me in mind of our first year together back in like 2013, mm. but also that event, funnily, uh, If the Secret's So Great, Where's My Ferrari, which was was just like a, a catchy title i thought and i i did my very first kind of what i call a big event like a two-day event with a, a couple of hundred people there or we recorded it and of course you heard those recordings but that was believe it or not that was 2010 which was very early in my journey with this understanding you know i'd been a, i was first uh introduced to the principles in the late 90s i uh got given by a friend of mine a book called The Missing Link by Sidney Banks. And at the time, I was early in my journey with, as you mentioned, NLP, right? And at the time I was, geez, I think I was, I had, I was still contracting as a pro software project manager. So I was, you know, working a job and that sort of thing. Uh, and so I read this book and I was like, no, 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 this is, this is, this is too simplistic. And I already know this and that. Nah. And I, and I threw it, I, you know, didn't look at the book again. I read it very quickly and confirmed to my own satisfaction. There was nothing to see here, you know? And then maybe five years later, I was out for dinner with my friend, Michael Neal and uh, Michael and I were chatting and he mentioned that he was doing this stuff and something rang a bell. And I was like, oh, is that like Sid Sydney Banks or something like that? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, that's strange. And so, and so I went and I looked at this book again, but still confirmed that, you know, nothing to see here. And I thought, I guess, I guess Michael's kind of lost his mind or something like that. And then I ended up working with Michael a couple of years, for, totally forgot about it. Ended up working with him a couple of years later, only to discover that this was the stuff he was doing. And I was like, are you kidding me? I already wrote this off. But because I was there and doing it anyway, I started exploring and I started having insights. And, and my first insight was I realized, oh, everything you've been looking for outside of yourself is already there on the inside. Now, no, I don't mean like shoes or cars or whatever, but I but, but the 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 kind of experience of life that we all want, you know, which is to have an experience of, uh, you know, peace of mind and adventure and love and uh, to be carefree and happy and fulfilled and enjoying our lives. That the only place that that can ever come from is on the inside. And I and I had heard that, Billy. I'd heard, you know, I'd been uh, on a spiritual journey exploring, you know, everything from Taoism to 12 steps to all kinds of stuff since the late 90s. So that idea was not new to me. 
but I wasn't living it. And all of a sudden, I, I kind of, I saw it. I saw the truth of it. Uh, so that was my first insight. Like, whoa, everything you've been looking for on the outside, it's already there on the inside. You've been looking in the wrong place. So that was, a, that changed my personal experience overnight, or started changing it, I should say, overnight. Then the second insight I have, and I know you've heard me say this, is I suddenly, funnily enough, this again, early 2009, I, I got a group of my friends together and I said, you know, I've been exploring this new stuff. I'd love to share what I've been learning with you. And I basically did a talk for a group of a bunch of my buddies for 40 minutes or something. And then at the end of that talk, we listened to a Sid Banks recording. And while I was listening to that recording, I kind of fell into a, a nice feeling. And I had another insight. And the, the insight I had was uh, that the fact that a person can even see or hear or have an experience of life means they have uh, a source of resilience and realization and transformation already there within them that that source of mental health is already there within everyone and like suddenly i knew that and i didn't know it the day before and it wasn't something that Sid Bank said where I went, oh, that makes sense. It's like I had an insight. I glimpsed something from within. And that immediately started changing the way I worked with people. And then a few months after that, so kind of uh, June 2009, um, I was uh, uh, at a talk and listened to someone talk about Sid Banks and that sort of thing. And I had another insight. And I suddenly saw, oh, this is principles. Now you would think clues in the name, right? Three principles. But but it hadn't kind of landed for me yeah. until that point, kind of six months in, what that actually means, what the implications that of that are. And I suddenly saw, oh, these are pointing to pre-existing facts of our psychology, pre-existing facts of what it is to be human. They're, they're a foundation, if you like, for our experience here on earth and the moment i saw that i was like okay i'm getting out of the nlp business i kind of did a 180 and i'm like this is this is where where the action is this is because i saw that the i kind of saw the implications of that what i saw was a future where just like you and me were born to adults who already knew about the fact of you know, bacteria and germs and wash your hands and all that sort of stuff. I kind of saw that at some point, didn't know whether it was going to be in five years or 50 years or 500 years, but at some point, a generation of children would be born to parents who already know that we all have this innate capacity for uh, resilience and realization and transformation that we all have innate well-being already there on the inside and i thought wow, that's the kind of world i want to help bring into being in whatever small way i can so that was kind of instantaneous kind of oh this is a there, there's a, there's a new direction there's a new sheriff in town and i i want to i want to go in that direction so uh so yeah that's kind of and and so that talk that i gave if the secret's so great where's my ferrari was my first kind of attempt to share this in a you know a big public arena at that point and then when you and i met you know my my uh book clarity had just been published and i was doing you know the clarity certification mm -hmm. training that you came on and uh gosh it's you know 10 years uh over 10 years since i first glimpsed it and it still feels really really fresh and like there's i keep like i'm sure you do billy keep seeing new in this keep seeing uh seeing this understanding more deeply see it. and 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 you know just selfishly experiencing the the benefits of that in my own life and seeing you know my clients and our community members and other people realizing the benefits in their own lives and uh yeah it's a beautiful thing i i i never before i came across this understanding i never knew i didn't know that this was possible 
for human beings, far less for me. Like I just didn't know that this was on the cards at all. I feel so fortunate and grateful and blessed to have been uh, given a glimpse of this understanding. It, it feels like just like, uh, wow, what a what a good deal. What a good deal. A good deal. That is a fact. You, it's the it's that moment, you know, I, um, when you were talking about it, it was opening up in my own head and the effect of having that audio. And that was just a very early day for you, Jamie, you know, when you were only really starting to get, to get a handle on, as you said, the 180 from NLP into, into the shift that the principles were, were bringing. But transferring that knowledge that I heard something, it took me a listener to, uh, and Simon, you know, my, my friend Simon Latinga, yeah. um, was, was the guy that shared that with me. But it was a conversation with my nephew one evening. And that was the evening before I picked up the phone and rang Nikki. I was sitting talking to my nephew and I had listened to this audio for I think the second or third time this weekend. And he started to talk about something and then he was talking about his future and, and this is that he had to do and this is what he had to do and, and, and just and for for no other reason I just literally just saw his head opening up and I could see how he was hammering his world together with all these different types of beliefs and and this is what he thinks he was supposed to do and, and I could watch him grinding his gears inside me he said making his life so difficult for himself, not life making it difficult, but he making it difficult for himself in life. And I went, oh shit, it was literally, it was that quick. I went, what? I can see this, I can see clear. And that was the following morning, then basically I got on to, to, to Nikki and I signed up for the clarity course. That was as quick as, that was literally how fast it happened. That wow. the moment it landed, it landed that quickly with me. And as we said, the rest is history since then. Um, mm. It's led to some very interesting avenues with you, Jamie. Um, and just let's throw the book out, throw the books out there, because they are, those books have been, I think, instrumental in along the development of your career, but how you managed to put the whole thing together, you know, with the clarity model, um, you know, connection, communication, understanding, and all of those things, and how you put it all together. Uh, well, you know, it, it's it's funny, Billy. They, it, as I look back, so when I was doing NLP, so before I came to this understanding, I was an NLP trainer and uh, worked in that field for many years and enjoyed it, by the way, as well. Like, uh, mm -hmm. that was uh, something I, I felt very lucky to have been doing as well. But people were always on at me when I was teaching NLP saying that I ought to write a book. And I just never felt it. I know it wasn't that I didn't feel like I could or deserved to or anything. I just didn't really want to. It wasn't, didn't ring true to me. And then once I had this understanding, I was like, oh, this is what I want to write a book about. This is, I want to write a book about it. So I wrote, uh, I decided what I do was I, I, I had a, a like an email list with a bunch of people on it. And so I went out to my list. And I said, I'm planning to write a book. I'm going to write a chapter a week and I'm going to send it out to everyone and you can give me feedback on it. And so I would send these chapters out every week and people would feedback, giving me their ideas and what they thought and that sort of thing. And so I, I kind of got the first draft of my book doing that. And then I went and spoke to a publisher and I ended up, uh, um, oh, I ended up being in the running to get a publishing deal. And funnily enough, uh, I was, our, our mutual friend and colleague, Dr. Keith Blevins, mm -hmm. was over from the States. He was, at the time, I had a thing which I called Three Principles University. So I had teachers flying in from the U.S. and whatnot every, every month and teaching a module and that sort of thing. So Keith came and did a module. And uh, I, I had I'd been talking to another colleague and they said oh you should get keith to review your book and i was like no i won't bother getting keith to review the book he'll have way too many comments and stuff i won't bother but then keith came and did this this weekend uh uh for for my company and i just i loved everything he was saying and i was like 
me and him see it the same way. Like we're totally on the same page. So I go, you know what? I'm going to give him a chapter to review. So I give him a chapter, ask him if he'd give me his feedback. He said, sure. Mm -hmm. So he sits down with me the next day and I'm like, he's going to want to write the introduction to this. He's, he's, he's going to be, he's going to be like, Jamie, you and me are on the same page. So he gives me my chapter back. And it's just covered with red marks and, and over and over again, it's like not the principles, not, the, you know, not uh, paradigmatic, all this stuff, cognitive, all this stuff. So I sit down with him. I'm like, Keith, Keith, I, I, think, I think to myself, he hasn't understood it. I just need to explain it better. So I'm trying to explain to him. I say, Keith, I was listening to you all weekend. I'm totally on the same page with you. I, I, I think of it the same way you do. He goes, no, just because you think you do, it doesn't mean you do. I'm pointing to something different. So I'm arguing with him like for an hour. And bless him, he's hanging in there with me, right? And about an hour in, he says, well, what about this? And he points out something in the book that I had said, you know, if it's a good feeling, then that's a signal you should do it. And if it's a, it's an uncomfortable feeling, then that's low quality thinking. That means don't do it. He says, well, what about remorse? I said, what do you mean? He goes, well, what about when you've, you've done something and then suddenly you realize, oh, I shouldn't have done that. And that's like, is, is that a bad feeling? So you should ignore it. Or is that like pointing you in a, good direction i was like well that would be pointing you in a good direction but it's a good rule of thumb he goes well, if we got principles why would we need the rule of thumb and all of a sudden it was like the ground opened up beneath me and suddenly i up until that point i had thought i was on solid ground with what i was teaching with what i was writing about all this stuff and all of a sudden it was like i was on thin ice and so i went back to the drawing board for like nine months and just really did my best to get it as crystal clear and hit the nail on the head as 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 as, as on point as i possibly could and then went back to the publisher and said okay here's here's what i what i've got and the the book clarity uh the first book Clarity, Clear Mind, Better Performance, Bigger Results came out in spring of 2013. That became a number one bestseller. Then the, the Little Book of Clarity, we brought that out a couple of years later. Then like Results. The yeah. You like that one, eh? Mm -hmm. I do too. I, I, it's, uh, I, the publisher got me to do a brutal edit of Clarity. They said the little book is going to, it needs to be half the size. So I just boiled it down to, what's the just the absolute essentials and put that into the little book of clarity mm -hmm. then 2016 results came out and became a uh, sunday times bestseller and then the little book of results came out a couple of years ago and the little book of results again really boiled down version of results which i'm really pleased with and the nice thing about writing the books is each time i write a new book my it's like I've made it, I, it's, I'm clearer on it. And so yeah. I can make it even more clear in the book. So it's really, I feel very, very grateful to have reached so many people in that way. Believe it or not, Billy, over 70,000 people have bought the books. So like amazing. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to me that uh, it can reach so many people. So yeah. That's the power, isn't it the power of a good communication, Jimmy? Yeah, you know, and the power of a book. You hit on Keith Blevins there, you know, yeah. uh, and geez, I love that man. You know, yeah, I'd love to have had him on. You, but it, it didn't work this time. Um, essentially, and I remember the, 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 those three questions that that spoke about the single paradigm that Keith would talk about. You know, it's either it's either all inside out, it's part inside out, or not inside out. Essentially, for the want of a better description, yeah. um, it, it literally describes the experience. It's 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 a roadmap essentially. Either your feelings are coming from the inside all of the time, not some of the time, or none of the time, but all of the time. And when it, it took me a while to kind of. Mm, what does he mean by the single paradigm? 
And that landed with me, Jamie, in such a big way at the moment that that, and I even remember seeing we'd been written up in the board inside in, inside in the gallery, that gallery. And, and, and I was going past it for a whole weekend looking at it, not quite sure because I, at the time I didn't understand what the single paradigm itself meant, you know. But the moment that that landed, I went, oh, right. Mm-hmm. And I'd love to hear more about that. We say Jamie's. Uh, understanding of the single paradigm well i'll give you my take on it um and i i owe a huge debt of gratitude to keith blevins and his his wife valda monroe who really kind of helped me to to get clearer and clearer on the paradigmatic nature of this understanding and and my way of talking about it isn't exactly the same as their way of talking about it but i i i talk about it in the way that makes sense to me philly so the, and the way that makes sense to me sounds a little bit technical and cumbersome, but uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll try and say it and, and see what happens. So the way that makes sense to me to say it is that we're, we're living in the feeling of what I'm calling the principle of thought taking form in the moment. Now, here's the thing that we talk about thought and people... People think about the thoughts that go through our head, like, what am I going to have to dinner for dinner tonight? Or, you know, what shirt did I wear yesterday? Or whatever it might be. But when we're talking about the principle of thought, what we're talking about is, is a power. It's a, it's a formless energy. It's a, it's a spiritual power. It's a, it, and it's like, just to give you an idea, if you uh, look around the room where you're sitting right now, yeah, my guess is you can see a room around you or uh, wherever you are in the world and it, and it uh, if it's anything like what it's like for me it, it genuinely seems as though we're looking out through little windows in our in our heads at a world out there but neurologists figured out over 150 years ago that that's not what's going on that our our brains are in a sealed container called the skull that has no windows and that data is pouring in through our senses. And then our minds go, what must be out there for me to be receiving this data? And, and they make a guess. We make a guess about the world, which is called an inference. We infer what must be going on in order for us to be receiving the data we're receiving. And then we create a 3D perceptual reality moment to moment and that's the world at hand that we perceive so when i say we're we're living in the feeling of the principle of thought taking form in the moment our feelings are tracking that perceptual that thought generated perceptual reality that's taking form in this hot second right now and and so other ways of saying that just for people to kind of get a handle on it. Sometimes I might say, you know, if I, a client actually the other day, I'm doing a, a, one of my 12 week coaching programs at the moment to so one of the clients on that program said, that's just a, that definition is just too technical for me. It sounds like jargon when you say you're living in the feeling of the principle of thought taking form in the moment. Can you say it some other way? I said, sure. Uh, how about uh, you're living in the experience of, the intelligent energy behind life taking form in the moment or you're living in the experience of god breathing life into reality moment by moment or you're living in the feeling of the divine energy behind all things creating an experience moment to moment. Like they're all just ways of pointing to the fact that it, it, it genuinely does seem to us like we're, you know, like we show up and we're looking out at a world that's just sitting out there doing its thing. And it, it was there when we got here, but it, in actuality, it's a, uh, a creative process. And how I like to think about it, Billy is, our perception is less like looking out a window at a bunch of stuff and more like a fire that's burning. You know how if you look at a fire, a fire looks like a thing, but it's actually 
a, re a real time process. It's something that's happening. We can point at it and we can warm our hands on it. It looks like a thing and we even use thing language for it. We say, look, the fire. But actually, it's, a, it's something that's happening. And that's the same with our perception of the world. It, it's a, it's a, a fire that's burning from the inside out, moment to moment to moment to moment to moment. And, you know, the other thing that really strikes me, there's this, um, there's this line that Sid Banks says in, uh, in his, um, I think it's in The Missing Link, but now, now that I say it out loud, I, I don't remember, but I'm gonna see if I can, if I can find it for you just a second. Uh, he says, uh, he said thought is, uh, when he uses the word thought, he's talking about the principle of thought, this divine energy, this formless energy. He said, thought is the missing link that gives us the power to recognize the illusionary separation between the spiritual world and the world of form. Let me say that again. Thought is the missing link that gives us the power to recognize the illusionary separation between the spiritual world and the world of form. Well, the world of form looks like a thing, but it's actually something that's being created moment to moment to moment. And what's creating it is, is God. It's like a river and at one end of the river is God and at the other end of the river is the world of form and thought is that river that's running through us in every moment. So that's that. The, so the single paradigm, as I see it, that Keith and Val did describe is really just saying it works one way. You're living in the feeling of the principle of thought taking form in the moment. A hundred percent of your experience is coming from thought in the moment. Zero percent of your experience is coming from anything other than thought in the moment. And uh, what it does for me, Billy, is it is it it turns it into a just a technical description. It's not telling you what you should think or how you should think or how to think better or anything like that. It's it's not really even talking about thinking. I don't. I don't mention thinking or thoughts no. very much, if at all, these days, aside from to say that I don't mention them. It's talking about a, uh, the process by which our experience of life moment to moment is created. It's a subtle difference, but it's very powerful. Yeah, it sure is, man. You know, it's the... The common misunderstanding is the thinking is what we're talking about. The noise that's yeah. rattling around inside in our head all the time. Yeah. It's, that's just simply the stuff of our head. You know, I am, and just as, as a clarifier, Jamie, or, or as a context to the principle of thought and the difference to principle of thought as it were unfolding and the content of thinking. Just as a, a clarifier. What are you looking for, Billy? Just, what, was you know, I, I, just to, sorry, let me rephrase that. I, I think I've got it for you, actually. You may not need to rephrase okay. it. What's, let the, me have a what's go the difference? Go and have a part yeah, yeah. of it. <laughs> All right, okay. Sort of like if you go to the beach and you make a sand castle, the sand castle is made of sand, uh, but there's tons of sand on the beach. You can make any sand castle out of it. and the the stuff that it's made of is the sand well the thoughts in our head they're made of the principle of thought but not just the thoughts in our head the world at hand that we see around us our experience of it is that's made of the principle of thought as well and our uh, the things we see the things we hear if you hear a bird singing 
that and to me this is where it's so powerful the bird the bird song that you hear that's thought generated bird song that's thought generated bird song i'm not saying there isn't a bird i'm saying a hundred percent of your experience of it just like like for instance right now you and i are having this conversation on zoom well it looks to me like I'm looking at there at your smiling face and it probably looks like something similar to you. But actually the Billy that I can see on the screen is made of pixels. It looks like the Billy I know, mm -hmm. but not really. If I check my memory, the Billy I know is not that small and flat. The, 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 the Billy I'm looking at right now is a pixel generated Billy. A hundred percent of the Billy that I can see is made of pixels. Now, until I thought of that, it has seemed to me like I've been interacting with Billy and the, what I've been seeing is Billy responding. But what I'm actually seeing is a little square of pixels on the screen that's moving in some kind of alignment with whatever Billy's up to. And I'm treating this little square of pixels as though it's actually Billy, but it's actually pixels. Well, the principle of thought is the pixelation of our perception it's it's what's creating our perceptual experience in every single moment and it doesn't seem like that but our experience of life is being created from within uh moment to moment to moment so i'm not even that interested in thoughts and thinking mm. i'm interested in this power this perceptual power that's creating an experience, this, this divine energy. Like to me, Billy, the principle of thought is just another way of saying God. It's another way of saying the oneness of all things. It's another way of saying uh, the, the formless energy behind life. It's just a way of talking about it. So another way of talking about it is just that it, it's all made of thought. So there's this, old joke I heard from uh, uh, Kurt Vonnegut. One character in one of his books says to the other character, he goes, you know that, that, uh, that white stuff that's in the middle of bird shit? You know what that is? That's that, that stuff you see in the middle of bird shit? The other character says, well, what is it? Said, that's bird shit too. And, and it's all thought. It's all made of thought. So the thoughts that are rattling around in your head, yeah, they're made of thought. The, the, uh, the insight you have to buy your friend a nice gift, that's made of thought. The, the, the worry that comes along and goes, oh, what am I going to do? That's made of thought. The, the sudden hit of love and compassion you get for a loved one, that's, that's thought. The hunger pangs you have, that's made of thought. It's all thought. It's wall to wall thought. There's, there, it's all thought. Wisdom, when people say, ah, wisdom told me what to do, that's the principle of thought. It's all thought. Like Sid Banks said, thought is the missing link that gives us the power to recognize the illusionary separation between the spiritual world and the world of form. So he said, it's an illusionary separation, which is another way of saying there is no separation. It's one thing. We're living in a spiritual world. We're living in a thought-generated perceptual reality. You're living in the feeling of God in the moment. You're living in the feeling of the oneness of all things in the moment. It's one thing. It's the truth. It's the, the illusion of that separation. And I love the metaphor of what's unfolding right now with the 2D version on Zoom. Yeah, as, as a lovely way of describing this is how it appears. Is the illusion of separation is just how it how it happens that way. Um, in relation to that, Jamie, one of the things that that shows up, I, I think it just came into my head as you were talking about, is this term separate realities mm. crops up in all of this. 
well, if that's the case, why is this or how does this person see this or how does that person experience that? Could you speak to that? Could you speak to separate realities as, as a concept? Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you how I think of it, Billy. Mm, there's, a, there's a beautiful quote that I've loved since long before I came across the principles. It's by a, by a, a, a writer called Tillard Desjardins. And you've probably heard it. He said, uh, we're, we're not human beings having a spiritual experience. We're spiritual beings having a human experience. Well, well how I like to think of that is uh, we're not human beings having a spiritual experience. We are one spiritual being having seven billion human experiences. So, you know, I'm having a, a human experience and you're having a human experience and all the people watching this are having a human experience. But the thing that's, you know, it's actually one consciousness that's having all those simultaneous human experiences. Just like, just like, you know, I'm pinned to this sofa by the principle of gravity and you're pinned to that chair by the principle of gravity uh but it's one principle of gravity it's not like there's jamie's helping of gravity and billy's helping of gravity and bob's helping of gravity it's one thing well same with the consciousness and so like to me The, the so-called separate realities are like, you know, the human experience that Jamie's having or Billy's having or Bob's having or whatever, they're each going to be experienced from a perspective and, you know, with, with a certain understanding of life and all that sort of thing. But it's one consciousness that's experiencing them all. And then something that is kind of follows on from that is that it really looks to me and this is this has become clearer and clearer as i've explored this understanding like everybody really is doing their best and doing what makes sense based on their current understanding of how life works and and that that really especially when it comes to you know my work as a coach and a teacher with clients is is it's so clear to me that what they're already doing makes sense given their current understanding of life. So whether that's, uh, whether that's, you know, working at a certain level or uh, smoking or taking drugs or delivering toys to sick children or whatever it might be, they're doing what makes sense at their current level of understanding. And if, they want to do something different. If they want things to be different, then the, the the biggest leverage point is however however it happens is going to be for them to get an understanding of life that uh, and an understanding of themselves and an understanding of the world that's closer to reality. It's closer to the truth about who we are and how experience is created and, and all of that. So that's where my focus goes. So, so like, yeah, everyone's walking around in, uh, in a perceptual reality that's being created moment to moment. They'll each have their own perspective. They'll each have their own experience based on their understanding of the world. Uh, but it's one consciousness that's experiencing that. And, mm -hmm. and, And every, every single person is doing what makes sense given their current understanding of reality, whether that's, you know, Boris Johnson or Donald Trump or Jeremy Corbyn or Hillary Clinton or uh, Angela Merkel or, uh, you know, the, the criminal who's breaking into uh, someone's house or the magistrate who's sending someone to jail or the, the, you know, terrorist who's strapping explosives to themselves or the, uh, the, um, nun who's, uh, uh, 
uh, taking people in off the street and feeding them, or the the you know the amazing NHS key workers who are uh, doing heroic work in the hospitals, or the people who are going out and socially congregating because they think it's their right to do so, or whatever it whatever it might be. Every single person is doing what makes sense to them based on their current understanding of of life. And uh, so what comes in, in hot on the heels of that is the fact that we're all psychologically innocent. Mm. We're, all, we're all psychologically innocent. You, you know, the, the, the person you most admire in the world, uh, if you saw the world the way they do, you would be doing the same things. And the person you most, uh, despair of in the whole world. If you saw the world the way they do, you'd be doing the same thing. We're all psychologically innocent. To me, and this is the second time today I've had this conversation. I had this with a, a lovely young man this morning um, about this, about the, um, the innocence of doing things based on how we understand life as it happens right now. And to me, what occurred to me around the, using the word innocence, Jamie, just in itself, the word innocence, as it were, takes the heat out of it. Yeah. Just takes the heat out of it when you're like, oh, fuck, I can't believe I did that. Or I was doing yeah. that. Or, but wait a second. If you didn't know any different, we're innocent of yeah. this action, you know, and and it's so powerful. It's yeah. such as it, it's just the recognition of innocence, of operating really, at the level of understanding that you have. Is you just do the best you can with what you know. Yeah, it, and it really, to me anyway, really opens the door to forgiveness and compassion and love. And and here's the thing, Billy. I'm, I, I struggle uh, just like the next person sometimes does when there's, you know, a behavior that I want to change or, you know, ever since we've been in law, I, for the first few months of this year, I was so pleased with myself. I'm going to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu three or four times a week. I'm working out at the gym. I'm taking care of myself. I'm, I'm doing yoga every day. I'm feeling like I'm totally on it. We have the lockdown and suddenly I'm, I'm doing like, I'm lucky if I do a yoga session every day. I'm, I'm, totally uh, away, absent without leave when it comes to the gym, the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, all these things. I'm like, well, uh, I'll, I guess I'll do something different once it makes sense to. Yeah, you'll morph, in the meantime, you'll morph into the coach. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're all, uh, we're all, we're, we're all, uh, it's a level playing field. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, and I, I've been asked this question by somebody in one of the lives, and I can't find a question because I do want to reply to it. It's funny. Um, where I was asked, what has been perhaps the most powerful learning so far for me? Because this has been five weeks, I think, of this, and it has been just a bath of, of wisdom and understanding. But going back to what you were saying, Jamie, about the seven and a half billion expressions became so abundantly clear to me doing this in the fact that, you know, this week, just the different speakers that were on this week, including yourself and Din Dickin and yesterday, etc., that every single speaker that has been on from Judith Sedgman all the way through to you today, has spoken about exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing in their unique expression. In the, in the uniqueness of it that everybody, this isn't just a far sum. This is how it unfolds for everyone. And we are that unique, the humanness that we are, the Jamie that we are, the Billy that we are, are simply just a unique expression of that. Yeah, 
beautiful. And it, it became so abundantly clear. The clarity of that, that particular just, whew. and every time I sit down to have a conversation, it's fresh ears all the time. I can't get jaded by it because every time somebody speaks, I go, yeah, you know, isn't it lovely to see it that way? Because it makes perfect sense. I feel very lucky, Billy, because we just get to keep learning. All the time. Yeah. Because it, 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 what we're talking about, like we, we often say it, it gets strangled in language. The Tao that's spoken. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, you can, yeah. right, you know what I mean? Listen to your man over, you know what I mean? Buy yourself a white yeah. mat down and sit back, buddy, you're fine, you know what I mean? The yeah. But it is, it falls into that category, it falls into uh, trying to find the language of it, you know? I, 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 the moment that we let go of trying to find the language for it and just let it be the expression that it is, because we are the unique expression of it. Yeah. That's the secret. Well, I really think so, Billy, and that's what we can share, isn't it? It's what mm -hmm. we're seeing. You know, I, I heard Sid on one of his recordings once say, just share what you know. And when I first heard that, I was like, yeah, sure, what else are you gonna share? But what I saw as time went past is my interpretation of what he meant was share what you know right now. What do you, what do you know to be true in this moment? What are you seeing insightfully right now in this second? And that, that really looks to me like what we can share. So it's been yeah, beautiful to, to spend this time with you today. Yeah, Jamie, I, I'm conscious of how the time is rolling up here. Where are you at now in, in, in the life of clarity and how things are shaping up for you? And, and throw the plug in, Jamie, because I, I want to hear it because I, I got so much well, out I, of it. I'm you doing know. all kinds of stuff. I, I'm, I'm getting ready to put in a proposal for a new book, so I'm excited about that. Looking um, forward to it. I'm, I'm. Uh, uh, just at the at the early stages of preparing for a rebrand of the website, like a makeover. So I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. we, we've got, you know, tons of articles and podcast episodes and all that sort of stuff at jamiesmart.com. And I'm in all the usual social media places. My handle is jamiesmart.com. Um, and then I'm, I'm doing, I've, I've got something actually I'm really passionate about. I've got a, a membership program called Clarity Pro, which is for people who are, passionate about sharing the principles with others and so we've we'll, we're the doors on that have been closed for a little while we haven't been accepting any more any new members we've got about 300 members in there but we're going to open it up soon and accept some new members into just to because i meet so many people billy who kind of like you and I, like you and i did sort of we get touched by this and the first thing we think is why, why, why didn't I ever know about this? Why wasn't I ever told about this? And then the second thing people, you know, is like, I want to get this out there. I want to share it with Everybody others. needs to know this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the third thing is, oh, it's not necessarily as easy to do that as I might think. So Clarity Pros for that. So it's just a low cost membership program to help people really develop their ability to share this understanding with others. And we got an amazing community there. And then I'm doing my, you know, my certification training, like the one you did, we're mm -hmm. doing that every year, and occasional coaching programs and that sort of thing, but just excited about sharing this understanding with people and seeing it more deeply for myself and uh, staying on the journey. I look forward to the book, Jimmy. Beautiful. Really, I do, I do really look forward to the book. Jimmy, thank you so much for, Taking the time out, you'll be clearly busy, busy schedule, morphing yourself into the couch as you go along. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, let's not be strangers. You know, uh, it, it's it, it's a wonderful world. There, right? the world is full of amazing people talking about this and connecting. And and the only thing people have to do is just listen. Yeah. That, hear something. The magic of communication. The magic of connection magic of it. Jamie, thank you so much, buddy. I really do appreciate it. Huge pleasure, my friend. Thank you for inviting no me. Thank you for all you're doing. It's great to see you. Pleasure.